Hi everyone, it's Michael Rice here from the United Kingdom and you're watching ESC Fan TV. Hello and welcome to another fantastic show of ESC Fan TV. The weekend's over, we've come back from Amsterdam in one piece and we're here to review not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven songs in this year's Eurovision Song Contest taking place in Tel Aviv. Now, don't forget, whilst you're here listening to the intro, hit that like and subscribe button as well. Don't forget to join in in the chat room as well. And of course, monitoring the chat room this evening, it's my co-host, Stuart. Good evening, Stuart. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm good. Nice to see you got back from Amsterdam in one piece as well. Uh, yeah, I've just about recovered, I think. <laughs> Took some time. Ah. Uh, Nothing, nothing to do with the whiskey cocktails and rum, rum, rum. Um, now, we've been uploading some interviews this week. Um, tell us about the press event. Yeah, it was fun, wasn't it? We, uh, we got to meet, who did we get to meet? We got to meet Kate miller Heike. We got to meet uh, Panda. Um, we got to uh, meet Sisters as well. And I think, didn't we, it was about seven, was it? I think we got to meet Jockey seven, Papai yeah. and Navina from Serbia. And you got to meet a few, uh, few lovelies also. I Oh, I was going to say, my interview with Kobe, Israel's representative, will be uploaded very, very, very soon. If you're, if you're a night owl, it may be up before the night is out, shall we say. Um, and also, I got to meet the lovely Michael Rice. He's representing the United Kingdom this year as well. And I do believe you have got some exclusive UK news for us, Stuart. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, no, I did. And... Um... I think it's about t about time we stop the rumours, actually, because there are a lot of rumours sort of banding about uh, about um, Cesar Sampson, a different uh, a different Sampson, um, to uh, one we might talk about at some point. Uh, Cesar Sampson was rumoured to take part for the UK last year. Some the big Euro Euro fans will probably remember that rumour. Um, well, it, it, yeah, I mean it, it's true. I think that's the first point. Uh, a reliable source has has told me that this is this is the case. However, the the rumours you may have heard are slightly different to reality. Um, the actual story was that the song was presented to the UK. It made the final six. Uh, it was due to be one of the the final six last year. Um, but you know, the opportunity to take part for your own country as an internal selection is sometimes too good. Uh, to turn down versus take part in a competition where you're not guaranteed to win. So that's what happened. So to put the rumour straight, Tom, uh, says, uh, the BBC did not reject Cesar Sampson's song. It was a case of he got the opportunity to represent Austria and good luck to him. He did very well, didn't he? I was going to say it was a superb result for um, Cesar last year. And hopefully, you know, Panda will do just as well. Panda's interview if you guys don't know already, went live on ESC Fan TV's YouTube channel earlier today. And there are plenty more interviews to come as well. So let's start on with tonight's show because we've got some fantastic entries to look at. And the first entry we are going to take a look at um, this evening is, dare I even say it, it's almost like Eurovision royalty. This is Sweden we're talking about here. This is the country that has won three times in the last 20 years uh, with Charlotte Nielsen, with Loreen, with Man Zemelo, and they are undoubtedly a big player. Now, they're entering with John Ludwig this year uh, with the song, Is It Too Late For Love? It's an upbeat gospel number is the way I can describe it. I'll be honest, for me, it is an absolute headbanger. But do you know what? It's not my opinion you're interested in. I think you're going to be interested in the opinions of the panel. I'm going to go straight across to Elliot. Good evening, Elliot. Good evening. So, John Lundvik, is it too late for love? I want to love this song, but I can't. <laughs> and before anyone says anything, it's not because it's Sweden. There is no anti-Sweden vote like Christopher Yorkman claims. That's the biggest load of rubbish I've heard in about 15 years of Eurovision. It's purely that the song and the entire aesthetic of the Swedish entry feels very similar to what they have done the last five years. The only difference is, is that it's a bit more gospel and that's it. 
Was it the best song in Melody Festival? And no. Was it the best singer? You could say that because John is a fantastic singer and performer. And I'm happy he's going. But similar to Robin Benson, I wanted him to go with the song he submitted the year before. He's gone with a weaker song. Um, I think it's very telling that it came out. He actually wanted to submit Bigger Than Us instead of Too Late For Love. So there's instantly a disconnect for him to this song, it feels like. And again, it takes a good minute 40 until the gospel choir is really going on stage for, him, for me to really get into this song. The first minute and a half, I'm just bored. And I don't like the staging. It's too dark. And the lamp thing he had above him just looks like he stood underneath a flickering lamp on the street corner. You could go in singing in the rain for all we know with that. It's it's anthemic. People love it. But I think people love him more than the song. And that's definitely where I stand with it. It's going to do well, but I don't think it's going to win. Yeah, I th- do you know what? I think they could be altering the staging in Tel Aviv. I mean, I don't know for certain. It's um, Sweden. They're, they're kind of but... stubborn and this is what you get, isn't it? Like yeah. when was the last time they changed their staging from Melfast to the final? Well, Charlotte Nielsen's staging changed a little bit between, uh, but I'm talking <laughs> 11 years ago now. So, you know, <laughs> hmm, okay. Um, now, I know someone who may not necessarily be a fan of the song, but I know he's definitely a fan of the artist, um, is Joe. Good evening, Joe. Hello, how are you, Han? I, okay? I'm very well, lovely. Now, um, say, is it too late for love? I, I should say, is it never too late for love when it comes to you and John Lundvik? <laughs> uh, I love that guy so much. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with Elliot. I love last year. Um, I expected him to win last year and to beat Benny and Felix. And I think I underestimated um the teenage fans out there let's say um but this year I was still expecting him to win I, I just had the feeling you know back in February when they said hi to him then that he's gonna get he was gonna have a really good song and I love the song I love it I absolutely do um I think the staging may change slightly I don't think it'll change a lot I love the idea of the fact that they shine it on him and then the gospel choir come in um I hope that he takes the same singers because they seem to gel. I think you could tell he really gets on with them and they love him. And I think one of the girls, I can't remember her name, but I know she actually came um, across from America so she could actually sing with him. So I, I can't see how he will not take her with him. Um, so, you know, I, I just think the whole atmosphere, you know, that they'll just click and they'll just gel on stage and it will be a, a really good um, slick Swedish performance and he's got that personality so I think he'll get a lot more public votes than, than Benjamin did last year. Yeah poor Benjamin it was the televote that um, destroyed him last year I think and if my memory serves me correctly it was something like eight televotes or something for Sweden last year weird, but I haven't got weirdly figures low. Yeah. <laughs> weirdly came, low. came very 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 um mm. Down, down, down the bottom end, shall we say. Um, now, um, John Lundbeck, he's going to be performing eighth in semi-final two. And we've already discussed on the show many times that semi-final two is looking to be the stronger um, out of both of them. Um, performing before him um, is Leonora for Denmark. Performing after him, um, we've got Kate Miller-Heidke um, for Australia. And just to introduce Mitchell into this, good morning, Mitchell. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Now, um, do you think Sweden's placing in that semi-final running order is going to make an impact on um, how John Lundvik actually does in Tel Aviv? Um, no, because when a song is that good, it really doesn't matter what place it could come. Um, I think that it's going to be dominating the night. Yeah, I love this song. I must say the first time I heard it, I this is my first time like full on getting into Melody Festival and... and um, there were a lot of like, hi, I'm returning. This is my moment to shine. I deserve this. And when I saw the interview, I was like, oh, gosh, she seems a little like too produced for me. I'm, I'm going to not like this song. And then when it started, I was like, damn it, I love this song. Um, and, yeah. But then, interestingly, I thought oh, I was like hands down the winner. And my brother was there at the time. And he's like, oh, worst song. And I was like, oh, wow. Well, clearly I'm like on something. I'm just following the song. Um, no, I loved it, and I think it'll do really well. I, I, obviously, it is a really pro- like well manufactured produced song, but that is Sweden, that like in Eurovision. And I 
I think it's really good. Um, I, I think they've gone with what is a jury favorite anyway from obviously my body bite you last year. And they've probably tried to think, how can we make this like in the jury and tell a vote? And this was the result they came up with. So, yeah. And I, do you know what? And I think, <laughs> yeah, it, it could do quite well. Um, now I'm going to go across to my co-host, Stuart. Hi, Tom. Hello. Um, what are we thinking? Sweden. Are you a fan or not? Yeah, I think this was the best song in Melody Festival. And uh, overall... I think it has the widest appeal. Uh, it's a, a very, very slick production. Uh, he's got a great look. He's got a great voice. Um, don't underestimate this one. It's not a personal favorite of mine. I can't get really get into it. I can't see it as a favorite. It's not in my top five. Um, but he's everything you'd want from a Eurovision performer. He's great. He will engage with the fans. Uh, he will deliver a, a faultless performance in Tel Aviv. Uh, looking forward to seeing him in London on uh, Sunday. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's it's... It's uh, it's going to do rather well. It'd be top 10 for sure. Some are saying it will win. I'm not convinced, but I, I think without shadow of a doubt, Sweden will have another very good Eurovision. Oh, I think you're absolutely right with that. Now, viewers may have noticed we have been joined by a special guest. I'm going to let Stuart do the introductions to this. So Stuart, do take your microphone off of mute. Stuart, over to you. Thank you, Tom. I'd just like to say a big thank you and hello to uh, the legend that is Daz Samson. Legend? Can you hear me, everybody? We can, Daz. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Yeah. It's lovely to be here. Before I go any further, I just want to thank everyone for... I caught the tail end of, of last week's podcast or broadcast, and I know that we won the best newcomer, so thanks a lot, whoever voted. You did, yeah. You beat Novina Brozovic of uh, Serbia and uh, Laurel wow. Barker, who uh, has, is a, a songwriter in virtually every national final that's ever, ever taken place and, and a personal favourite of Mitchell's for Australia. So there we go. Yeah, yeah, can, just, can I just come in and really say, I think the Sweden song is fantastic. In fact, the only thing that's wrong with it is that it's not four minutes long because as a songwriter, what it does... It has that lovely gospel breakout three quarters of the way up. And when he kicks back into the final chorus, you're wanting the roof to, uh, you know, just to open. And it, and it only really has what we call a half chorus at the end. So the ending is a little bit of a, uh, but for me, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal hook. And I disagree with my very good friend there. I think it probably will be top five. There you, what do I know? <laughs> it's all about opinions, Daz, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hey, so tell us about you. So it's been a little while since we've seen you. Um, it's been about a month. <laughs> we, we, we all uh, we were all watching in in, uh, in wonder where you and Nana were uh, were taking place, uh, taking part in Belarus. Right. Uh, before before we get there, let's take our minds back to uh, 2006 yeah. in in Athens. Yeah. Uh, remember the heat very well. Remember the Olympic uh, Stadium Park uh, and the, the show itself. What's your uh, What's your memory of of twenty of two thousand and six? Uh, do you, Do you look back with fondness? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I, I, I you know, I, I I find the stick that I cop for it uh, quite funny actually, because at the end of the day, I just put myself up. It was the people who voted that sent me there. It was their choice. And um, in terms of in, you know, I'm going to be honest, a lot of what I did during the whole build-up to Athens was a, was a little bit of acting, a little bit of David Brent tongue-in-cheek. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because when you're an artist at Eurovision, certainly when I did it, it really was an us and them mentality. When we arrived there, which was like the week before, I noticed that the, the, there was a, I just felt, and the fans might not agree, but I felt as a performer, there was a very anti-British feel going on. And so what we had to do was we had to create this, this, this almost like self-belief and arrogance we were going to win. I'm going to be honest with you, I knew we weren't going to win. I wasn't going to say that. I wasn't going to say that. That's like, there was a World Cup on at the time. That's like Sven Goran Eriksson saying, we're not going to win the World Cup. Everyone who knows football knew we were never going to win the World Cup in, in, in Japan. I knew we weren't going to win it, but I had to play this role. And um, in terms of, you know, you have to understand, I took five girls with me there that, have, that never, that haven't even performed at their local nightclub, let alone the Eurovision stage. And we, and we, to be fair, we nailed it. You know, there's not really, apart from putting a gun to everyone's head and making them vote, there's not really a lot more we could do, you know, but we enjoyed it. 
I always wanted to be a footballer and that was the equivalent of going to the World Cup for me. It was just a musical extravaganza. And, and that's why I am very vocal about the competition and I love it immensely. From whatever walk of life you're from, it doesn't really matter. It's, if, if, you're in, if you like pop music, if you like, you know, Saturday night entertainment, this is a, the greatest competition in the world. And I'm so privileged that my name goes down in history as doing it. It does. You're a Eurovision legend, Daz. And just thinking back to 2006, you mentioned the girls you took with you. Um, some of us remember the years before 2003, when uh, when Emily Reed took part in a song for Europe, yeah. and, and uh, that song helped me. I remember it like it was only yesterday. And I can't believe she didn't win. Yeah, we ended up sending Gemini, and we all know what happened after that. <laughs> some people say me and Nona are Gemini, but that's another story. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, obviously Emily on point vocal she actually did the i don't know if anyone knows this she actually did the, the big kfc advert a few years later she did have that really really long note um i mean i obviously i've worked with her so i know how good she was she did deserve to win that year she only missed it by a narrow margin and that's why we took her because that stage is so big that that's why she was pretending to do the dj but really she was holding all the vocal together for the yeah. chorus she was fantastic and, and since Eurovision, you've done lots of different things. You've uh, you mentioned football. You've become a football manager. You yeah. uh, you travelled to Europe. I'm a big I'm a big football fan. I'm a big Arsenal fan. So yeah, it's nice to talk to a football football fan. Thanks for the grimace there. I appreciate yeah, you that. Said, you said football, and then you said Arsenal. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know. Life's not so great as an Arsenal fan right now. No. Anyway, anyway, so, you, so you've kind of explored that side of things. And then we find ourselves back in, in 2019 and on the Eurovision stage again. So, so how did this come about? How did you kind of start to collaborate with DJ okay. Nonna? Okay, well, um, the, I, I have tried and I've had many conversations with the DJ over the last few years Certainly. I think, obviously, as you know, I tried, I wrote a song with Carol Decker from Tapau in 2008, and we had a meeting with the BBC, but we didn't get through uh, that. And then I, saw, I, I moved away in 2010, and I, I was in America and Asia for a few years. But when I got back in 2013, sorry, 2014, I have been trying, believe it or not, since 2014 to go back. It's just because you don't publicly hear what goes on behind the scenes. And this year, an agent friend of mine said um, he was having a conversation with someone from that side of the world and they're going to open up to an international act. Now, of course, you know me being a pioneer, you know, being the only British actor ever to go to Belarus. I had this song that I'd written 18 months ago anyway for Nona and it was just sat on the shelf. And I thought, especially with what won last year, because actually, believe it or not, I'm going to give you an exclusive. I had a chat with the BBC last year and presented them with Kinky Boots to which they were horrified. Because the fact is, if you put kinky boots up to the British public, they will vote it in. Because that's the way we vote in this country. Oh, and yes. The BBC don't want them. That's why they play this. And I'm not anti-BBC because at the end of the day, I love, I love my own country. And I, I, I'd really like to go back again. If not as an artist and as a writer, because people don't understand. I write a lot of songs that you don't even know I've written. You know, just because I'm not on the television anymore, I'm still a writer and I've written for other artists that have been in the charts. You know, since Eurovision, I've had another five top ten hits. No one would know that because they're written under a different name because of the way I'm perceived. And that's what I've had, which is a little bit sad. It's interesting that the Swedish guy as well has British connections. And so you've got a performer like that with a song like that and he's having to go for another country. That is my point with what's happening in this country. We are too safe. Someone asked me the other day, can we win it? Of course we can win it. The UK can definitely win this competition again. But at the minute, we are very, very safe. And that's why, you know, I like the kid who's going this year and it's a decent song, but compared to some of the competitors, you know, I ask you this, would Laurie have won my year without the masks on? I ask you that, Stuart. Ah, uh, that's a good question. Who knows? Right, exactly. Sometimes in Eurovision, you've got to have a gimmick as well, as well as having a great song or a great performance. In my opinion, I'm not saying I'm an expert. Well, you, you had a great gimmick, Dad. I mean, I, I appreciated it all the way to Athens, I've got to say. And I must admit, I appreciated Kinky Boots too, but for different reasons. Right, so anyway, back to the story. So I got a call, um, and ironically, Nona wasn't even, because I wrote the song for Nona, I never recorded, I recorded my session singing on it. And my agent said to me, they like the song, you're in. Now this was 
four days before the selection. That is how quickly. So I, I, I phoned up Nona instantly and said, Ian, do you want to fancy going to Belarus? She went, yeah. What song? Played the song. She had to learn the song. We had to do the video. She lives in a different country to me. And when we landed in Belarus, we went straight from the airport, pretty much to the TV studio. That is, so we were very, very unprepared. No excuses. No excuses. We weren't good enough. And the song that won, I really like, and I wish her the very best. So in closing with that, Daz, you've got a, a little film coming out very shortly, yeah. which I, I've seen you promoting uh, via Twitter and, and uh, various pages. Um, it's going to explore your journey to Belarus. Well, I've um, actually got a book coming out. And um, so basically this, this documentary, which they, they, were, they were following me before the Belarus thing on, on, on the various other things that I do. Like I say, I, I still write for people. I just don't, nobody knows and, and, and I'll tell you what, I challenge anyone to go and find it. You won't be able to find it because of the, because of the pseudonym that I use. Anyway, so um, I've just, re just realised the discs are behind me. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> just let me do that. <laughs> I've got a second. Uh, right. So, um, so what was the question again, Stuart? I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I forgot. I, I was talking about your, your, uh, your oh, yeah, documentary. The film. So, yeah, the, so yeah. a documentary which, you know, which is like, an, which will have a lot of, of the older stuff from 2006, which didn't get broadcast as well, because there was a documentary that the BBC did during that time, it was on BBC Three, and they did a follow-up one which never went to air, so we, we, we've been using a lot of older footage. So Euro, Eurovision fans will get a real behind the scenes of what was going on. And a lot of, you know, 25% of the 30% of the story will be about the whole Belarus thing. So it's, it, if you're into Eurovision, it, it, it's a good watch. Listen, Daz, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you about your experiences. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully you're gonna stay with us for today's show. We're gonna go through I will. the songs. I'll, I'll stick around and listen to the views. Yes, and well, we'll probably ask you your views as well. But for those in the chat room and those listening uh, on our podcast or watching on Catch Up on YouTube, uh, it's been a bit of a special one-off. We've had the great Daz Samson's join us. Make sure you click like and subscribe. Back to you, Tom. Cheers, Stuart. Right, guys, we're moving on to our second song of the evening, and we're moving across to Montenegro. Uh, Montenegro, unfortunately, ah. um, have only had a, how can I put it, a... Oh, selective history when it comes to Eurovision. Um, they've only qualified twice for the grand final um, since they started entering by themselves in 2007. Um, that was in 2014 and 2015. This year, they're sending a vocal group, D-Mol, um, with the song Heaven. And at this point, I'd like to say a very good evening to a brand new ESC fan TV newcomer. It's Denise. Hi, good evening, Tom. Hi, everybody. <sighs> So, Montenegro, what are your views on this year's Montenegro entry? Well, I have to say I was dreading this, but it's my guilty pleasure. I think it's probably because it was one of the first nations to announce their, um, their uh, finalist. Um, so probably it's a tune that lots of us have heard um, more times than, than others. Um, I think their video is fantastic, of course, on the night. It'll be about the staging. Um, it's got great harmonies. It's cheesy as hell, but for me personally, I think it's great. It'll appeal to a lot of people. It's very sweet. It's very nice. Will it come anywhere? I have no idea. I mean, it's second in this first semi-final, isn't it? Yes. So um, I don't know how it's going to do. Wouldn't it be great if, if they could qualify? They stand a good chance being in the first semi-final. Um, the song, it, you know, it's cheesy as hell, but it's lovely. It's got great words. It's for a romantic like me. It's lovely. Um, but you know, I'm falling from heaven straight into your arms. You know, it's you know, I think it's lovely, but the, hey, that's me, I'm a bit sloppy, but I think it's absolutely lovely, lovely harmonies. Um, but it's nothing, it's, it's, it's in a completely different class to everything else. Yeah. Um, but let's just cross our fingers for them. I yeah, think I, it's lovely. I was gonna say, Denise, were you impressed by their performance in Amsterdam? Obviously, they performed in Amsterdam at Eurovision in concert this weekend, yes. I thought it was lovely. I think they did really well. I don't know what they're going to do for staging. Uh, they, I should think they probably opt for their original national final staging um, with the musical notes. Do you remember that one? Uh, they all standing in, in front of musical notes. Yeah. Um, I thought it was lovely. I, I, I thought they performed it very well. Okay. Now let's bring Tristan in on this conversation. Good evening, Tristan. Hello there. Good evening. Evening. Now, yeah. you were someone who was also in Amsterdam at the weekend as well. Um, Montenegro, 
is this an uphill struggle for them to qualify? They always seem to have to try a little bit more than some other countries. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a, I, unfortunately, um, Montenegro was my cigarette break, so I didn't actually see them in Amsterdam. Um, but um, I, I don't know. I started off, it started off as my bottom, my 41st out of 41 songs. Then when the revamp came in and the, and the video came in, um, it's, I've, just, I, I've, I've started to start to really quite like it. I think the revamp is really good. I really hated the staging in, in Montenegro with the, with the one on the musical notes thing. I thought that was extremely naff, um, mainly because it didn't really make any sense. I mean, they were just sort of, and, and obviously they weren't moving, so there wasn't very much um, chemistry between them. Um, I have seen the video uh, in Amsterdam since on YouTube, and yeah, it looks good. It's 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 creeping up in my in my um, my top, but it's still sort of like around about the thirty five mark. Um, it's it's going to get a few points from Serbia, obviously, and from Slovenia, who traditionally give them quite a lot of points. Uh, but it's missing. It's going to miss votes from countries like Armenia, Macedonia, and Albania, who traditionally give them votes. I don't think it will make it. Unfortunately, um, it'll probably probably just miss out on that top ten. Okay, just bring Elliot into the conversation as well. Um, now, um, Montenegro are going to perform second in semi-final one, as uh, Denise said. They're sandwiched between Cyprus, um, which we know is Tomasa with replay, and Finland, which is the much-hyped Darud. Um, is this going to pose a problem for them, Elliot? Uh, yeah, this proves that this song is filler in the semi-final. <laughs> I'm sorry, this, this song is doomed. Yeah, it's sandwiched between, you know, modern pop song and Darude, who is Darude with this, albeit quite simple lyrically, very infamic EDM song, which is really powerful musically. So it's going to get completely washed over. And I, I don't see it going anywhere. I don't see it coming last place because people will enjoy this and people will vote for it just because it's, it's, it's simple, it's catchy and it does get in your head, but it's going nowhere. But if anyone wants to, wants to be brave and put a bet on it to win, it's 250 to one. So why not i guess but it is last with the bookies to win the competition and yeah i don't see this in the final sadly oh sad times mitch i wish him the best though mitch is this something you put a bet on or not um i wouldn't put a bet on it i guess i just want to say i'm a little starstruck that we've got dad samson here my first eurovision was 2006 i was forced to watch it not forced to watch it but it was french homework to translate il est and then we ended up just all talking about why UK does not get enough votes as it deserves. But yeah, so it's really lots of fun. Montenegro, um, yeah, interestingly, I heard this as an audio first and I was like, okay, they really can sing. They're a really good group. Um, there's incredible harmonies, which I'm really jealous that they can do. You've even got a key change. Joanne and I love a key change. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, uh, watched the music video and it was reminiscent of San Marino. Um, no, that song. Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, something of light for you and me. But, chain of um, light. Chain of light. Uh, I thought it was uh, a little like you know for the for the teens, but um, but then I see them in interviews and they're super mature, super like fun people, and I, I think it's I think it's really good. Um, I think they could impress us. It's a shame that they're second, just like San Marino was, I think, in the semi-final. Um, but I, I really do wish them all the best. It's not bad, but I mean, it could just get forgotten. So I do wish them all the best, though. Okay. Let's take this to the wider panel then. We're looking for a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Are Montenegro going to actually qualify out of their semi-final? Um, do you know what? I'm going to go straight to Daz. When I, when I look, listen to it, I gave it a 7 out of 10, and I'll tell you for why, because it ticks a lot of Eurovision boxes. It has that, that stereotypical Eastern European noise. But they're very good singers, and they do look very good. Unfortunately, I think being second is probably going to be the thing, that because I think they could make the final if they were in a better position. And if they sing it well, you never know. Um, it, it, it's a good 7 out of 10 for me. And... Um, could go either way, but if I, if, if I had to put a bet on it, I would say they just missed the final narrowly. Uh, just, just skimming out outside yeah. the zone. Denise, thumbs up, thumbs down? Well, much as I'd love to give it a thumbs up, it's got to be a thumbs down. Elliot? 
I love them, but it's a thumbs Elliot, down. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, we can't hear you. Sorry. Oh, Am I here? yeah, you Am I are. Alive? You are now alive. It's all right. Love them. Think they've got good voices. Song does nothing. It's a thumbs down. As much as I love them. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, they reminds me of a cult. Like, they're running around screaming heaven on a beach in white clothes. So it's actually a thumbs up for me. I hope they qualify. <laughs> okay. uh, Joe. Oh, I wish I could say they'll qualify, but no, I, I don't think they will, unfortunately. Thumbs down. Okay. Phil and Michelle. Oh, th thumbs down from them. Um, it's a no from me. <laughs> Mitchell. Very talented, but it's a nay. Tristan. No, I'm afraid I'm finally not. Stuart, thumbs down. What's the uh, chat room saying? And what do you say as well? Uh, so the chat room's getting going. They're, they're all in amazement. We've got Daz on the show. Uh, from my point of view, I'm with Daz actually on this. I think this is, this is a grower. And uh, I quite like it. I think they harmonise really well. I'm going to say this is a thumbs up. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I've got it in my top 10 as well. It's a thumbs up for me. I'm, I'm predicting 10th place for it. I think it's just no. going to get in there. Wow. <clears throat> but don't tell Oban because um, might not have <clears throat> Cyprus in there. But we move on. Open being a panellist who can't unfortunately be here this evening. And we move on to Denmark. Denmark have a, a another reasonably decent uh, showing in the contest. They lost one in 2013, um, failed to make the final in 2015 and 2016. But last year, Rasmussen uh, came ninth for them um, with a song which I can only describe as Denmark does Game of Thrones. Because if you swapped the opening title song of Game of Thrones for the Danish entry of last year, I don't think you'd actually see the difference. Now, um, they're sending Leonora this year. Um, the song is Love Is Forever. Um, it's a very happy little ditty, um, is the best way that I can describe it. Nice, bright, cheerful, stripped back. Good evening, Phil and Michelle. What do we think to the Danish entry? All right. Yeah, I'm going to say, he's nice. He's just so nice. It's so nice. It's like a muddy cup of tea with four sugars nice. Um, it's a bit love, love, peace, peace for me. Um, and the thing with this song, on one hand, you've got Denmark with Love Is Forever. And on the other hand, you've got Hitari from Iceland with Hatred with Will Prevail. Um, and for me, I'm kind of more leaning towards Hitari on this. It was sickly sweet. It was shiny. The staging was mental. What was going on with the staging? I mean, what was that big chair got to do with anything? I mean, it meant no, absolutely nothing whatsoever. And then when we used to when we used to sit there and watch it before we did any of this, if you sang in a different language, you got an extra point. She'd go, do you know what? Mm. People sang on, it gives extra points if we sing in a different language. Yeah, go on, we'll do three. So they think they're getting extra points. It's um, it's bad. It was really, really bad. I know for me. I, 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 you know what? I, I don't think Lenore is feeling the love from you guys. <laughs> can I um, just, can I ask please? Phil? Oh, Phil, how much? Someone. Phil, how much has she had? <laughs> um, that, that much. That much. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you know what? I'm, Joe. I'm going to go across to Daz. Daz, Denmark. <laughs> Leonora, what, what do you make of the Danish entry this year? We'll make the final, all right? And I'll tell you, just for those reasons we were talking about before, it's like, it's, it's so safe, I'd rather put my money in that song than a bank. It's that safe. It just ticks all the boxes of, 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 of you know, the, yeah, I, I don't know who mentioned the big chair, but when I first seen it, I thought, what, what's that big chair all about? Um, but it, I think it will make the final. It, it's like you, you can't you can't sort of fault it or have a go at it because it's just so nice and safe. I mean, um, will it win? I've got more chance of winning it, and I'm not going. So there you go. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I think you're actually on the money there. It's it's got that nice innocent vibe. I think that people are going to pick up the phone and vote for, but at the same time, it's not got that factor that people are going to go in their droves towards it. Um, 
Now, someone I know who is a very big fan of this song, mainly because they're currently holding a Danish flag in between their teeth, <laughs> is Tristan. Um, <laughs> I, I, oh, I'm, just, gonna... I'm, just, I'm, I'm just dumbstruck that people just don't get it. Come on, what, what, why do you love the Danish yeah. entry so I, much? It's just, it's just a fantastic song. Um, well, first of all, it's, it's, it's old-fashioned in all the good ways, in the way that Montenegro is old-fashioned for me in the bad ways. This is just such a beautiful song. It actually makes me cry, and it's the only song that makes me cry. Netherlands doesn't make me cry. Uh, it seems to make a lot of other people cry, but for me, this one makes me cry. It's just so beautiful. Um, it's, it's, my, it's for my number one song of all 41 songs. I've put uh, quite a bit of money on it. Well, not quite a bit, but I've, put, I've certainly put, you know, about 30, 40 quid on it. In fact, just in the last 10 minutes, I've just put another five pounds each way on it uh, to win the semi-final uh, because I got odds of 65 to, 66 to 1, which is really good, I think. Uh, put it each way, five pounds. So mm. I could win 449 pounds. Um, well, I, th- I don't think it will necessarily win the final, but I think it will win the semi-final because it's got, it's got um, in that semi-final... Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, and Ireland. And those are the four countries that have most given uh, points to Denmark historically. So the top four are all in that semi-final. On top of that, they've got countries like Austria. And Austria, like that kind of song, as we know, Zoe, with, um, with, their, with her song. It's a sort of a similar sort of happy song. So um, uh, the Swiss are going to like it as well because there's a bit of French. Uh, unfortunately, France aren't voting in the semi-final, but it'll get a Swiss vote, it'll get the Austrian vote, it'll obviously get Sweden, Norway, Netherlands and Ireland, because they always vote for, for Denmark. And it's a lovely song, and it will stand out amongst some of the other slightly wackier songs. Um, it will win the semi-final, I'm quite sure of that. Well, or come second, that's why I put an each-way bet on it. And it will do very well in the final, hopefully win. I'll be, um, I'll be waving my flag uh, during it. It's a lovely song, beautiful. Oh. Now, let's, let's just uh, start to wrap this up. Uh, let's bring Denise in on this. Um, Denmark, they're performing seventh in semi-final two. They're sandwiched between Romania um, on one side. They've got Sweden on the other. Is this the winner that Tristan thinks it is? Well, I think it is. It's very catchy. And the secret of this song is about audience participation. Um, I was lucky enough to go to Stockholm to Melody Festival. And, and I actually interviewed Leonora on the evening, on the night before. And um, she was very, um, she was very professional, very sweet, nice. Um, she knows what she's got to do. Um, she's very confident, and it's very catchy. And she knows it's catchy. And she said to me then, "It's all about the audience. Everybody's singing it." And we were all singing it on the night. And I know it, it's gone down a bit because all the other nations have um, declared their their um, participants. But I think I agree with Trish. I I think it's going to do really well. It's it's uh, well positioned, and it's catchy three languages it's got all you know like Daz said it's got you know it's got that magic mix um and I think she's going to do really well I don't know if she's going to do the big chair Michelle I think she probably is going to do the big chair and I think everybody will get behind it it couldn't be more obscure from last year with Rasmussen but I think we're going to be very surprised by Leonora excellent so I'm going to assume Denise we're looking at a thumbs up from you I love it thumbs up Daz, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's, a, it's an in, in the middle kind of thing. Um, Elliot, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, thumbs up. This is actually my favourite song in the semi-final and I will definitely be voting for it. And if Rasmussen can win the Televote in the semi-final last year, Leonora can win. She's good vocally. It's charming. She's got the big chair. This song is brilliant and it's so sweet. I love it. Big thumbs up. Okay, Gustav, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's a borderline qualifier for me, so thumbs up. Okay, Joe. Yeah, she was brilliant in Amsterdam, I thought. Thumbs up for me. Bill and Michelle. No, it's thumbs down from, from me. It's too saccharine for me. Nah! <laughs> Mitchell. Um, this song is a grower. At first, I didn't like it. Now I do. I still don't like anything with the chair and the, the kind of gnome dancers i don't so it's it's a thumbs up yay for me though tristan right, tristan seems to have frozen i think but we'll go we'll go to Stuart. yeah uh 
not sure really it's kind of one of those for me that it's it's just too safe uh borderline qualify just miss, missing out on, in my opinion tom uh, i have to say it's a thumbs up for me because i was quite happy in the uh ball in amsterdam just kind of swaying along to it um i think it's it's another great danish entry although i will also admit that denmark is quite you know close to my heart i always tend to quite like the uh danish entries now we're moving on to moldova um if there was to be a country that is currently in vogue maybe moldova would be it um whilst they didn't qualify for the final 2014 to 2016 um, they had a massive turnaround in fortunes and um, when they sent sunstroke project in 2017 coming third in the contest overall um, and then doredos um, came 10th last year um, this year they're sending anna with a power ballad called stay um, certainly a very strong um, performance from her um, and at this point i'd like to say a very good evening to gustav hey hey how are you I am doing great. How are you? Very well, thank you. So, Moldova, what are we thinking with these guys this year? Are are they still going to be that in vogue country that they've been for the last couple? I mean, it's a classical Eurovision ballad, and I love it. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to do that great. It feels kind of dated. But what I really want to talk about is is the guy in in the music video. He's so good looking. If they bring him, I'm going to give him all of my votes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and that 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 is one way to secure votes for you. <laughs> I suppose it is. Stuart, are you are you hoping they're going to be uh, bringing bringing along the the guy from the video? Surprisingly, not Tom. <laughs> it, it's it's just not my genre. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get back onto football, please? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so so, I'm still trying to compose myself after that. So, um, so, <laughs> can we talk about Panda again? No, no, that's for no, another no. day. <laughs> Let, let's, talk, let's talk about the actual Moldovan song. Um, it's third in semi-final two. Obviously, we've said semi-final two, really difficult. It's coming um, after Ireland before Switzerland, is this going to be something that dents its chances? Do you know what? I was uh, stood with Andy Brook, who's in the chat room uh, in Amsterdam, listening to this. And to tell you the truth, never paid it uh, a, a moment's attention uh, as an audio uh, on Spotify or, or any other device I may be listening to. Other, device, other music players are available, of course. Um, but do you know what? Live, this really grows. Uh, it's a beautiful ballad, well sung, and it just starts to build and build and build and build. She's got a great voice. Um, I thought this wouldn't qualify. I'm now convinced it will. I think this is actually going to be one of the stronger ones in the semi-final. Okay, and to bring bring Joe into this, um, is this one of the better ballads we've got this year? I do think so. She, I agree totally with what she was saying. Um, in Amsterdam, her voice was just fantastic and um I, I just felt myself getting sort of captured in and I, I you know I, I was sat at the back and I was like swaying to it and I thought she was amazing and to be honest I, I was really lucky as well to, to meet her for a brief moment um outside earlier in Amsterdam and, and she's a really nice lady she doesn't smile very much but I just think it's a persona but she's very very sweet um and I'd love to see her go through um just because she, she actually spoke to virtually every fan that was standing there that wanted to talk to her so she's got loads of time for everyone oh. you know nice lady and and finally Daz the UK can vote in this semi-final is this a song you're going to be picking up your phone and voting for <laughs> uh, no uh, there's absolutely no doubt that this girl can sing absolutely I mean I've only listened to the song a couple of times but the the voice is amazing it, it, it is a bit cliche and Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Also, you know, it reminds me a little bit of Celine Dion. In fact, the song actually has very, very similar chords to Celine Dion's track "Think Twice." It's very, very similar chord pattern from a songwriting perspective. Oh. So, again, I, I put it down. You're going to crucify me, but I gave it a five out of ten when I was listening to it. But that's that's from a song perspective, and of course, there's a lot of visual aspects. And again, vocally, if she pulls it off, can it attract some extra votes? Maybe. 
it's a little bit cliched for me, and I think there are personally better songs, but I wish her well, and she's a great singer. So I'm, I'm going to assume, Daz, it's a, it's a thumbs down from you? I'm going to say, I'm, I'm going to go neutral, because I can't decide. Okay, no, no, that's cool. I, I, I'm going to be honest, it's, it's, it, it's not in my top ten. Um, I like it, um, I just think the semi-final is too strong uh, for the song. I think if, if it was in semi-final one, um, we might be having a different discussion. Uh, mm. But let's see what the panel think. Um, Denise, thumbs up, thumbs down for Moldova. Sorry. Absolutely no. Okay. Elliot. Great voice, but no, the song is boring and sh I will be waiting for those three minutes for Switzerland to come on stage after her. So, sorry. Mm. Um, Gustav. And I'm going to say Gustav minus the uh, backing dancer. It's a no for now, but uh, Moldova knows what to do now. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> um, I'm just laughing at good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think so, because as I said, semi-final two is very strong, so she's probably very borderline. Possibly won't get through. Hello, Michelle. I'm going to go, uh, it might qualify just. But it's tough, and I don't think it's no. the final. It was awful. It's not a quality. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell. Uh, um, oh, yeah, yes. I've got my eye on this, but at the moment I'm putting it as a no. I don't think it'll make the final, but you know, it could blow us away. Tristan. No, I'm afraid not. Um, if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Moldova should stick to the Balkan stuff. Um, they had a very good um, Balkan song, potential Balkan song um, in their semi in their final, and they should have gone for. But no, unfortunately not. Okay. And finally, um, Stuart, what's your opinion? And also, let, let's hear what the chat room's got to say as well. <laughs> there, there's a lot of they're still talking about Daz Sampson, so, uh, so I don't think anyone's actually paying attention to what we've actually got to say this this time around, Tom. What do I think? Definitely, I think this is one of the songs that will certainly qualify, and. Um, I th there's a lot of songs, you know, that won't qualify that are fan favourites, and this will go through. So someone's missing out. Okay. Now, speaking of Daz, do you know what, Daz? I'm going to I'm going to go to the next entry. I'm going to go to you first. And the next entry we're looking at this evening is France. Uh, Bilal Hassani uh, representing France with Roi, um, which translates as King. So I apologise if I have absolutely rubbish French French enunciation um, at all. Um, it's written by Madame Monsieur. Um, who wrote last year's entry, Mercy. Uh, Bilal, very, very big on social media. Um, romped home in the teleboat, actually, in Destination Eurovision. Um, Daz, what are your views on Bilal's song? Oh, dear. Um, I, 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 I love to be positive about everything because it's such a great competition, but I'm just not feeling this at all, at all. Now, they are one of the big guns. They are one of the big boys. Um, I, I, I was listening to it today and, you know, great performer, you know, I, I like the way it, it, it flicks in and out of a language, you know, always like yeah. that. Um, and, um, but for me, I was trying to grasp something positive because I don't like being negative, but for me, it's, it's a bottom half. I know we're, it's in the final anyway, so it's, 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 it's a bottom half for me. That's the most positive thing I can say. Sorry. It's all right. Uh, do you know what? I, you, are, you are talking to someone here who absolutely loved Simone's Two Leda in Destination Eurovision and quite wanted that to qualify instead. Um, but let, let's stick to the song in hand. Let's go across to Phil and Michelle. Um, Bilal, is this a song you're going to be uh, voting for on the night? Um, I don't know if I'm vote for it. It's all right. It's quite a confident song. I sort of quite like it. Um, it's got the theme of, you know, the sort of I am what I am type. I am thing. what that's I it. am. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that sort of thing. It's, you know, it's a self-confidence thing. Blah, 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 blah. No, um, you I think, you know, oh, it's okay. This is a record. It's purely French for them. Um, yeah. It's okay. He needs good staging, though. He done it. And it was like, it built and it built and it built and then it was like... 
I like the look of him. He looks really nice. I like his hairdo and all that and everything. I like that he's really happy, but the song is rubbish. It's brilliant. Oh, no, no. no, from you. Now, I know someone who actually um, may be slightly more positive um, about <laughs> this. If we move across <laughs> to Joe, um, come on. He, even even that must have something going for it. I can't mm. do it properly. <laughs> I, do you know, I was... It's, Oh, oh is sorry. Is it, both? Oh. is it both? Oh, I can't what remember. It? I mean, I mean there, because she and I were doing it like that. And that's it, Cher. It was like that, wasn't it? Yay. Um, I don't know what to say about I mean, I'm going to say R.I.P. Simone, because, you know, I was a massive fan of Simone's. But uh, I mean, it's great when I mean. Um, he seems to be a really nice guy. Um, a bit peeved he pulled out of Amsterdam, if I'm totally honest. Um, whether I'll get to actually mention that to him on Sunday. Um, at least he's doing London. Um, the song, I just don't know what France were thinking, pulling it through. I mean, he's, 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 a, he's, I think they bought him rather than the song. Although the song's obviously got pedigree in who, who wrote it, because let's face it, we all love Madame Monsieur. Um, I don't know what to say about it, really. I'm very neutral about it. That's what I'm going to say. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Okay. Um, I can't wait okay. anymore. I'm not that positive. I'm sorry. I should be more positive, you know. <laughs> sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm going to move on to Gustav. And I'm going to say to Gustav, do you think Bilal's high following on social media, because we know he's very popular on social media, do you reckon that's actually going to be a real plus point for him in terms of his placing this year? I don't think that because I think most of his followers are from France. But can I talk now? Because I am very positive about, about this entry. I love everything. Uh, everything. It's in my top three with Greece and Netherlands. And I, I don't even care that he doesn't sing that good. It's just such a good song. I love it. Uh, and I, do you know what? I think there is a lot to like about it. I, I think I'm, it's a song that I've um, said before. I think it, it could suffer from what I call icebreaker syndrome, which is a reference to um, a Norwegian entry from a couple of years ago, where the tempo alters between the chorus and the uh, verse, which produces a bit of a disconnect. Um, but, I mean, he has got a really good following out there. And the song is actually, you know, it, it's got something going for it. And I think the pedigree there as well, the social media following. I think, you know, I can't see France walking away with it because I think there are other stronger entries out there. Um, but I don't think they'll disgrace themselves on the night. Now, Stuart, what does the chat room have to say about Bilal? Uh, it's going to be one that does really well. That's what they're saying. They're saying uh, they like the song, uh, they expect it to do really well. I think this will do really well. I think this is top five. <laughs> Okay, top five, you've heard it here first. Now, um, we're going to push on and move on. And this time we're going across to Georgia. Um, Georgia are um, entering this year with a song that I can't even pronounce in Georgian. So I'm just going to call it by its English translation. It's Go Ahead. Um, it's sung by Otto uh, Nemadzi. And let's be honest, Georgia, poor Georgia, last year, um, they actually came bottom in their semi final. Um, with the ballad for you. Um, let's go straight across to Mitchell. Is this going to be an improved showing for Georgia this year? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, I have this one just slips my mind really. Um, the the I hear it and and I quite like it, but it's I don't know. It's kind of forgettable for me. Granted, this is like the last song I've heard, so it's probably not so fresh in my memory. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. I, I think, um, which semi-final is it in? It's in semi-final one. It's going to be performed 11th and it's sandwiched between Austria and Belgium. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, at the moment, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. that's, that's kind of my opinion on it. <laughs> no, that, that's fine. You, you can, you can sit on the fence. Stuart, are you, are you sitting on the fence as well? No, look, I'm I'm normally sit on the fence, as you know, Tom. Um, but this is horrible. This is this is not good. Um, do you know what? He's great. Let, let's start with the positives, uh, yeah. and let, let's 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 deep dive into Georgia. 
Um, good singer. He, he's gone through the pop idol process in Georgia uh, against many different artists. He's won. Uh, he's, a, he's got a phenomenal sound. He's, he's, in fact, I think he's done two or three different um, types of these shows. So he's really well known in Georgia. But the actual song itself goes nowhere. It's, it's just, yeah, it's just, in my opinion, it's not good. We're going to move on to Denise. Um, Denise, Georgia. Um, are they going to at least not get the wooden spoon in their semi-final this year? No, you can get that Daz Sampson, get him to put his money on Georgia coming bottom in everything. Okay. I cannot, uh, I cannot even start to like this song. I've listened to it a million times. I, it's, it's got, I agree with Stu really. I, I'm sorry. I, I've tried to like it. I, I think the backing singer has seen more chance of winning singing the Jersey Boys song than he does. Um, he's got five backing singers that come in at about one minute 20 um, and they sing a lot better or they they look a lot better. Um, bless them. Um, I don't know, you know, if, if this is the song that Georgia put through, what the hell was the rest of them like? That's all I can say. Um, I I seriously, I I don't have a good... <laughs> it's got a bit of a dark side. Um, he's a bit screamy at first, but yeah... You know, my money's on the backing singer singing the Jersey Boys, basically. Oh, well, I, I liked the Jersey Boys. Also, I must also say at this point in time, um, apologies, because I did actually mix up my own notes. They're actually sandwiched between um, Australia and Belgium. Um, oh, and, not even even, worse, <laughs> and not in that order. It's Belgium, then Georgia, then Australia. Australia. Yeah. yeah, Tom, well, just to clarify, we, we're not saying that he's, he, you know, it's his fault. He's, he's got a fantastic voice. Absolutely. No, I, and there's no question there, Stu. He has got a great voice, but um, uh, the song takes a long time to get going. And when it gets going, it has no structure. You know, it just, it, it kind of, you know, you can't kind of get into the song. Now, someone who I know who likes to analyse um, the musicality um, of such songs is Tristan. Um, Georgia's song, uh, Tristan, surely, yeah. you know, the guy has a fantastic voice. Is, is that not going to get him some marks on the night? Um, unfortunately not. I mean, I, I actually don't mind this. It's certainly not anywhere really near my bottom. Um, it's, um, it's, I don't mind the song either. In fact, it's one that I keep, it's one of those earworms I keep humming to myself, believe it or not. And da, 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 sort of quite rousing, um, but um, unfortunately, unlike with Denmark, which has had a very a huge amount of luck with the other countries in their semi-final, poor Georgia, they don't have Ukraine. Ukraine traditionally always give them loads of um, points because uh, Ukraine aren't in it. Um, Russia, Lithuania, Armenia, and Azerbaijan are also countries that tend to give them lots of votes. The only friendly country, really. It's Belarus um, that <laughs> traditionally give them votes. And Belarus often give them a few votes, not, not necessarily that many, but they give them a few votes. So I'll get something from Belarus, hopefully, but it's not going to be, there's absolutely no way it will qualify, unfortunately. Um, uh, it's, not, it's nowhere near as bad as a lot of people are making out. I know it's not doing too well with the bookies. Um, that's probably why, because of the, the neighbours. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's not only is it followed by Australia, but after that come Iceland. So people are just going to forget it by the time the, the, uh, the, 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 the voting happens. Uh, it's just, there are too many good songs after it. And, and, that's, and that's a great shame. But Tristan, I'm going to assume it's a thumbs down from you. And I'm just it's, going to get the views yeah. on the rest of the panel. Um, Daz, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's, it, it's, it's a thumbs down from Daz. Denise? It's the biggest thumbs down I've ever given in my life. Ah, oh, very Simon Cow. Um, Elliot. Uh, he sings it with such passion and drive, but the song is such a dirge. It's just a waste of three minutes. Thumbs down. And this is coming last on Tuesday night. Okay, Gustav. It's a no from me too. Joe. Lovely guy, but my number 41. Hey, okay, Mitchell, <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, at the moment, it's um, thumbs down for me. And finally, Stuart. Ah! Oh, it's a, it's, a thumb, it's a thumbs up from Stuart. He's not got his uh, thing on. He's muted himself for that. Oh, sorry, I wasn't on mute. Yeah, no, it's a thumbs up, Tom, obviously. 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to our final song of the night. Um, and we're moving across to the Baltic state of Estonia. Um, so, they've got a patchy qualification record. They didn't qualify for the final in 2016 or 2017, <laughs> but I think it's fair to say they made a fantastic comeback last year um, with the operatic song La Forza, um, mm. which even non-Eurovision fans have said to me they remember purely because of the amazing dress um, that she wore that essentially was part of um, the staging. And she came eighth um, in the final as well. They have only qualified to the final seven times since the semi-finals were introduced in 2004. Um, but this year they're sending Victor Crone with the song Storm. Now, Victor Crone is someone who actually has got pedigree. Um, he competed in 2015's Melody Festival in Sweden. Um, lost out in the Andra Shansen to Samir and Victor and has moved across to Estonia. Let's go straight to Gustav with this one. Estonia, are they going to qualify this year? You know, when I watched it today and tried to like take some notes for this show, I, my notes were just no. Uh, I think that says it all. I don't like it even a bit. It's boring and soulless, and no. No, Let, let's, let's. I'm going to try and bring Elliot into this conversation as well. Um, Elliot, is this is this um, a similar opinion that you share as well? Oh, Elliot, you need to take your thing off. Yeah, oh, there we go. sorry. That's right. <laughs> I'm here. Um, Estonia, right? Um, well, I think it showed a lot about what the Estonians thought of the selection when they voted a Swede to win by quite a, quite a big margin. First and foremost. <laughs> it's never good. Um, this song is okay in studio, but there's nothing unique about this song, and that's going to be its biggest downfall by being in semi-final one. It's called Storm. We had a song called Storm last year. It's a EDM song. Finland have got an EDM song this year. It, he borderline shouts at points because he's struggling to hit the high notes. The, the rhyming is, it's some of the worst rhyming I've ever heard in Eurovision. Like, it's terrible. A free sure rhymes this and this in the chorus. And it's sandwiched between Iceland and Portugal, two very unique WTF songs which are going to split opinions. And it's just, there's just nothing there for people to grab onto. It's a very safe song. And people may vote for it because it is safe. And they're used to that sort of sound, but it's not going to be enough to see it through. And it came ninth in the international jury in Esti Lau. And so I don't give it much hope doing any better at Eurovision with a stronger selection than what he was against in Estonia. Uh -huh. So Let, let's I'm not bring, loving it. Let's bring Daz into this conversation. Are there any po positive points that we can take from Estonia's entry this year? I love this panel because it's all about opinions. I'm telling you right now, this is hands down in the final. And I'll tell you why. Because it appeals to, we're all big Eurovision fans, but there's people who watch it from a, just watching the programme perspective, and that's where it will get the votes. And I'll tell you why that is. For me, it, it, it knocks Darude out of the park, providing that he sings it right. I like the way it starts very acoustically. And then it goes into almost like a Swedish house mafia record. And, and that's where, obviously, with me being a, a, in my dance music background, I picked up on it instantly. I, I, you know, for me, it's in my favourite five and that's saying something for me because it takes a lot to impress me that much. All about how he sings it, because obviously if you don't sing it right, it won't. But for me, out of everything we've spoke about tonight, apart from Sweden, that is walking to the final, in my opinion. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. And just to uh, wrap this song up with Phil and Michelle, um, Storm, is it a thumbs up, thumbs down for you? For me, it's one of those songs that I don't really have anything for at all. Ah, oh, shitty face. You know, hang on. Um, you know, as I said before, it reminds me a little bit of I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty, but it's just that it's just nothing. I don't hate it. I don't like it. To be honest, I'd rather have a song that I hate because at least I've got a feeling there, you know, but it's just that, mm. nah. Okay, middle, yeah. of the, middle of the road. Is it middle I of the road for you, Michelle? No, I like it. I like the look of the blog. I like the look of the song. <laughs> oh, it's going to win then. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no, no, honestly, it's like <laughs> no. I like the look of the blog. I like the look of the song, 
I, it's a collie. I mean, what's not to like? Yeah. And do you know what? I totally agree with you. I, I get the same feeling about this song as I had with Cesar Sampson's song last year. It was a song that I would listen to and not quite realise I was listening to it. And then I would actually go and, oh, what am I listening to? Oh, I'm listening to this again. And it's got that real earworm quality. And I think people are going to pick up the phone and vote for, for this. It's in semi-final one. I think it's one of the strongest songs in semi, semi-final one. Um, I think putting it between Iceland and Portugal actually means it's going to stand out more as well um, because you've got two very um, off-the-wall entries and then you've got this in the middle. And I think this could could um, win the semi-final. And if it doesn't win the semi-final, it's certainly going to come in the top three, my opinion, purely and, purely and simply. Um, now, final thing we need to do, um, obviously it's a big thumbs up from me. Um, I'm going to assume from Daz, it's a big thumbs up from, from you as well. Um, but what do the rest of the panel think? Denise, thumbs up or thumbs down? It's a big thumbs up. I've always liked it from the very first time I ever listened to it. So, yeah, love it. Okay. Elliot? It's good, but I just want more from it. So it's kind of more in the middle, more down. It's not a bad song, but I just want more from it. I think it can still, I saw someone could go in the three minutes, I feel like, and it doesn't quite do it. Okay, good stuff. It's sad to say this because I always love Estonia, but it's a big, big no for me. Okay, Joe. Yeah, it's in my top five. I'm crazy about the song. Absolutely love it. Big okay. thumbs up. Phil and Michelle. Hmm. Meh. Oh, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thumbs down slash middle of the road thing going on there. Mitchell. No, it's not it's down. Oh, okay. Thumbs down, Michelle. Uh, Mitchell? I love this song. And every time it comes on Spotify, I'm glad that I listen to it throughout. It's a big thumbs up from me. Tristan? Um, personally, I don't like it, but it will definitely qualify, especially following Iceland, um, which is going to be a Marmite song. Um, so the Iceland haters will like it. And also, obviously, they're going to do... So- he's, he's obviously going to do something special with the with the visuals, uh, as as we saw in the final of SD Lal. So that will add some points to it. So we'll definitely qualify. And finally, Stuart, what are your opinions? And what does the chat room say as well? And Stuart, uh, you need there to we go. go. Get the hang of this in a minute, Tom. <laughs> well, this is like our hundredth episode. And I, I finally yeah. find, find the 100th, the one, the most hardest to actually turn my phone off mute. So the chat room believe it's going to qualify and it's going to finish somewhere between 10th and 15th. Okay. So a, a medium amount of love. Uh, do you know what? This is the one song uh, that non Eurovision fans love because it's probably the, the type of song which, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm copying every, every word does. Sorry if you're alive, darling. <laughs> no, no, no. It's the, it's the type of song that most non-Eurovision fans are, are finding most appealing. And if you think about the viewers, it's not us Eurovision fans that vote. We vote a fraction of the, the, the sort of the, the, the sizable number. Uh, it will be non-Eurovision fans. And write this off at your peril. This theoretically could win Eurovision. Do you know what? Yeah. I, jury vote winner, I reckon. No, I, I'm going to nail my colours yeah. to the mask on this one. Jury okay. vote winner. Now, um, obviously, we have been busy at uh, ESC Fan TV uploading the uh, interviews from uh, Amsterdam. Uh, there were some fan interviews that have gone up. There also have been interviews with Kate miller Heidke. Panda has gone up as well. Um, and there are loads more interviews as we said to go up um over the coming days so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and Stuart, have we got something else in the pipeline yeah we have we're uh, we're very lucky enough to be at london on sunday tom aren't we and a bit like in amsterdam we were out in the streets talking to fans finding out what their opinions are uh there are several videos on our on our youtube channel now of fans and giving their opinions we'll be doing more in london tom aren't we of course we are. Which, and if you are listening to this and you know you're going to be at um, LEP queuing outside the venue um, on Sunday, come up to us, okay? And you too can be on ESC Fan TV. We're also hoping to get 
some interviews with some of the big stars um, of um, Sunday night as well. Fingers crossed. Um, and you'll find out about more of that on our YouTube channel. And also, don't forget, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. Okay, like and subscribe to the lot and you can find out about what's coming up on here first. Now, final thing to do is to say thank you to my wonderful panel uh, for a fantastic show. Thanks to our newcomer, Denise. Thanks to Elliot. Thank you very much. It's good to be back. <laughs> Thanks to Gustav. Thank you. See you later. Thanks to Joe. See you soon. Thanks to Phil and Michelle. Bye. Bye. Thanks to Mitchell. On fly, everybody. Thanks to Tristan. See you in Copenhagen. A massive, <laughs> massive thank you uh, to Daz Sampson for joining us. Mate, it was worth it just to spend the time with the lady from Yorkshire. She was brilliant. Is it Michelle? <laughs> it's Michelle. I can, I'm, I'm already writing a record for next year for me and her. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic and thank you as always uh, to my co-host Stuart thank you very much Tom can I also make a, a mention to uh, to uh, to Mitchell uh, coming to us live from Sydney it's what time was it when you when you we went on air? it was about 6 a.m so I mean, that's, that's dedication you. for you yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. We love you. Thank you, Mitchell. It was very enjoyable. Thank we you. We love you. Dedication to the cause. Now, um, we will be back next week, same time, same place, nine o'clock, reviewing some more entries for this year's contest. Don't forget, in the meantime, like, subscribe, comment. Don't forget also, check out those interviews. They are fantastic. And we'll see you then. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.